the Frank Sinatra Show. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here is the star of our show, Frank Sinatra. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, I am not Frank Sinatra. Complain it again? Although I must say that we do resemble each other quite a bit. I mean, we're about the same height and our eyes are blue. That is, uh, his, mine are bluer than his. His are sort of a pale blue and mine are more of a blue surge. You see, they shine. <laughs> and of course, I'm a little bit heavier than Frankie. But then who isn't, you see? <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, I did my first, my own first TV show a week ago last Sunday. I started my season. And I, thank you very much. <laughs> and I, um, and I was such a big hit that I'm now known as the Maury Amsterdam of the Pacific Coast. <laughs> and of course, the reason I'm here tonight with Frankie, you see, Frank did a guest shot on my television show last year when I was in New York, you see, and I didn't pay him for it, you know, I... <laughs> no, you know, we were pretty good friends and I didn't want to insult him, you see, <laughs> by paying him. And I understand that tonight he's not insulting me either. <laughs> You know, a friendship like that can break both of us, you know? <laughs> but um, another reason that I'm in New York is because last Friday, you probably read this in the paper, last Friday, the Friars Club gave me a testimonial dinner because of my... Um, <laughs> thank you, because of my 20 years in radio, you see? And not only that, but also because... I've been a member of the Friars Club, a theatrical organization, for a long time, you see. And as a matter of fact, in Hollywood, I'm an officer of the uh, Friars Club. I'm known as the Dean, and that's a very, very important executive position. I would say that the Dean of the Friars Club is comparable to a photographer on Reader's Digest. <laughs> But anyway, it really is a great pleasure, ladies and gentlemen, to be here. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. It's a great... It's a great pleasure, ladies and gentlemen, say, to... Say, Jack. Hmm? Pardon me. <laughs> oh, oh, hello, Frank. It's a great pleasure, ladies and gentlemen, to be here Jack. tonight. What? Jack, you know, you were only supposed to introduce me and then tell a few jokes and then introduce me, you know. Oh. Well, you see, Frank, I got to talking about myself and I'm sort of carried away. You <laughs> know how you get like yeah. that, you see. But uh, what are we supposed to do right now? Well, we usually do a song right about here. We do. Mm. Well, unfortunately, I don't sing. I don't know. <laughs> I, I know, Jack, but, but I'm supposed to sing a song here. Now. Oh, you're going to do the yeah. song, I see. Well, all right, I mean... On my show, we had a half hour. I got about three seconds so far. <laughs> is blowing but I can weather the storm what do I care how much it may storm I got my love to keep me warm I can't remember a worse December just watch those icicles fall What do I care How the icicles form 
I got my love to keep me warm Off with my overcoat Off with my glove I need no overcoat I'm burning with love My heart's on fire With one desire So I will weather the storm What do I care How much it may storm I got my love to keep me warm Off with my overcoat Oh, hot Off with my glove I need no overcoat I'm burning with love My heart's on fire With one desire So I will weather the storm What do I care How much it may storm Look at here now I got my love to keep me On behalf of our sponsor, I would like to say that uh, we had a wonderful time uh, since we've been here. Yeah. Frankie, just a minute. Uh, This is the only thing, there's only one thing that bothers me on this show. What's that, Jack? Well, uh, you're mentioning the sponsors. After all, I'm for one sponsor, you work for another. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't ask first whether there's any... uh, Friction, you see oh, what conflict? I mean? Between conflict between the two. Oh no, Jack, you shouldn't worry about that. No. <laughs> you don't have to correct me, you know. <laughs> no, look, Jack, the, pro- the product. <laughs> My English is good as yours, at least. That means... <laughs> Jack, the pro- the product. <laughs> the product is entirely different, Jack. Oh. I mean, we're on for Echo Wear. Echo Wear. Echo Wear. Echo Wear. Well, what's that? <laughs> That's a little echo we have here on our show, and he sees he stays on the ball every week when he hears this kind of thing go on. I wonder what keeps him so sharp all the time. Flint knives, flint knives, flint knives. Yeah, it's kind of cute. That's sort of an echo. Like that, huh? I say, yeah, it's cute. Whenever we mention a product, That's he right. repeats it. LS, MFT, LS, MFT, echo, echo, echo. echo. <laughs> Lucky strike means fine tobacco. <laughs> Be happy by echo, be happy by echo strike. Be happy by echo, by echo strike today. All right, look at that. I've been smoking echo wear for now. Oh, all righty. Well, that's enough. All right, let's forget about the echo business again. Now, Jack, what did you plan to do for us tonight? Well, I don't know. I thought uh, as a guest it'd be nice if I uh, told, came out, you know, and told jokes like I did before, you see. You think that's smart? <laughs> Look, Frank, I'm comedian, you know. After all, you didn't hire John Foster Dulles here. You know. <laughs> well, Jack, what I mean is today, today the trend is much different than it's ever been. I mean, the comedians are more physical, like Jackie Gleason and Martin and Lewis and Red Skelton. They bounce up and down, they take falls, and they're always going, you know. It's very physical. Well, I, I have the same uh, uh, system, you see, mm-hmm. at home when I do my television shows, although... I have it worked out where I stand perfectly still, you see, and the camera moves up and down, you see. In that way, the cameraman makes more money and I last longer, you see. No, uh, no, I'm very serious, Jack. I mean, you've got you to take this seriously. You can't get by anymore on television with just talk. I mean, when you, even when you tell a story, you, mean you just a can't joke. tell a straight joke. You can't it? tell a joke. When you okay. do it on television, it's got to be acted out. Now, look, I'll show you what I mean. Mm-hmm. Two guys, that are, uh, they met at an Elks convention, see, Sam... And then Max. And they meet and they say they went to the barn and Sam says... Funny at rehearsal it was Harry. (laughs) (laughs) Sam and Harry. Mm -hmm. And Sam walks up and he says, Hello, Harry, how are you? (laughs) See? He says, what do you know? He says, say, are you a large member? And the other fellow says, no, I'm just average size. And he says... (laughs) Do you still make records? Yes, of course I do. Good, good. 
<laughs> now, Jack. What? I think, though, seriously, uh, maybe you ought to get started by announcing. So, like, maybe, you mean, maybe be a... sort of a master of ceremony. Yeah. Well, that's the thing that I would like to do on the show, Frank, mm. because that's what I've done all my life, even mm -hmm. before radio. All right. I was a master of ceremonies. Now, who would you like to me to introduce first? June Hutton. June Hutton, mm -hmm. I see. All right. Now, what uh, would you want me to say about her? I mean, you know much more about her than well, I Well, when introducing June Hutton, I would say something like, um, ladies and gentlemen, we're very fortunate tonight in having with us a, uh, a uh, young lady who has provided, provided us with many, many pleasant vocal moments from show to show. And I hope uh, uh, she continues to do so in the future. And um, this young lady is not only gifted with a beautiful voice, but she has charm. She's lovely, and she's always welcome on our show. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're very proud to present to you... June Hutt. Hey, 